So the Story Buddy app is um, essentially used to make a story, but you can just do whatever it is you want with it. Use it for math or reading. Um, in order for them to create a new story, they would go to the New Story button. Um, once they click there, everything is pretty kid friendly. So the paintbrush is going to help them let them paint. Text will help them, will allow them to type. Picture, they'll take pictures from the camera roll. So the only thing is that they can't go to that and then take a picture. Like the picture has to already be on the app. And then the last one is they can change the background. So I guess I should have shown you kind of. There, the eraser is in the paintbrush. Um, however, the eraser will not erase the text. The text will always come up here, but when you type, um, you know, I'm typing my really long sentence, and um, the only way to exit out of it is by bringing the keyboard back down. So I'd have to bring the keyboard back down, and from there, then I can move my text and whatever it is I need to do. I tell my kids, you, you don't touch where it goes until you're done with your sentence, because then they get excited about moving it. Um, and then when they're adding in a picture, they go to the camera roll, and again, it's only the pictures that are already up there. And if they're taking a picture of Tucson, it's just, it's very um, iPad friendly as far as like the two fingers will zoom the picture and Um, a new page, you will click the plus button and it'll add the page. This app will require a lot of support as far as what you expect on the first slide, what you expect on the second slide, things like that. Um, some of the kids got mi mixed up, but if they do have multiple slides and this was actually supposed to be their last slide, it's just like the apps on the iPad, so they'll hold it down and then just bring it, slide it down to wherever it is that you want. Um, they put too many because you only wanted four slides. You just, sorry, double tap it and it'll delete it for you. And even double, like ask you again, which I really like because the text won't do that. So anything within here, it'll just delete it if they delete it. Um, so another uh, feature of this is the audio. So again, double tap it, and then it'll just bring it up here, and press, they, ha they do have to press the record button. What am I gonna say? So they'll be like, on this page, I need to put my title page and the author. Um, so they can review what they said. So they'll be like, on this page, I need to put my title page and the author. Um, and you know they can go through and add audio to whichever one. When they're done, and it doesn't mean done, it could just mean done for the day, they just click the done button. Um, and publishing won't mean that it's gonna, they're still able to edit it after they've published it, which is a really nice feature. So, this is my story. Now, the reason why you don't see anything is because my first page didn't have anything. But initially, or if you have something on the title page, it'll come up here. In order for them to change the title, they just click on it. Um, and then, you know, I just want to write Tucson, written by Leah. And it'll come up that way. So in order for them to see, okay, I want to see how, I want you to review your work and see how you're doing, or, you know, I want you to read someone else's story, whatever it is, they just click on the story, and it's just like a book, just flipping through each page. Um, when they get to the page that has audio, they can just click on the play audio button. <gasps> Didn't I record it? Oh, no, 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 it was in the first, one. first page, you're right. On this page, I need to put my title page and the author. So then they're able to listen to the story. Um, so, um, like I said with the other groups, you know, it doesn't have to be limited to reading. You can do math and have each 
kid work on something and explain their thinking and then pass it on to the next kid while the other ones are working on slates and later you can go back and be like, oh, you know, Barb did this, she messed up here, but when she was explaining it in her strategy, she did a good job or something, you know? So it's just, um, but my last little idea of this was just for you guys to think how you would use it in the classroom mm -hmm. or if you would use it. Yeah, or if you have any questions. I have a question. So I made a story, which is really nothing, but mm -hmm. I wanted to go back and edit it and it, this is the screen it brought me to. Yep. And then it says you need to go to the editing area to do this and I don't know. Good question. <laughs> so down here we have the three buttons, the three special buttons. So the first one with the pencil, that's their editing button. Um, this one is where they would publish it or send it to you, however it is that you want, and then that one would be to delete it. So let's say this is day two and I'm looking for my story. I would click on the editing app and it'll take you back to where we were earlier. So to where you're able to add in things or take things out, um, whatever it is. So and anytime they click done, it'll say publishing still be there. And then go back to the editing button and they, they can you know, keep going. So that's what's kind of nice about it is that it can be a, you know, so for our books, we can start working on them now if we need to. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not necessarily, but they could, it could be an ongoing project that they add to or take away from. Um, but do you guys have any other questions? Maybe you just talk about the getting pictures. Oh, yeah. So first grade brought up how they're working on maps in the world and how they would um, get an, a picture from the internet. Mm -hmm. So we searched Tucson just because that's where we live and <laughs> <laughs> Daisy didn't know. So basically, if you hold on, if you hold on to a, or what is it, like just click on a picture for a long time, it'll come up with the list and you can open the image or, you know, whatever it is. But saving the image will save it to your camera roll. And although nothing happens here, if I were to go to my pictures, it comes up. So, um, and later, this will come up. This same camera roll is what comes up in your story button. When I click on my edit button. Um, so, what's up? Um, so one thing as far as text um, <laughs> you know, to make their book more real or to make it interesting. They can style text, and the style will just let them change color, direction, font size, or even font. I found that font is a distraction. Because <laughs> there's just a ton of different ones. I mean, for you, that'd probably be good, like if you're planning on making a book for them or if you're doing some sort of activity. But there's a ton of fonts, so, um, that is very distracting. Um, if you want to change the picture, you could also style the picture in different, you know, with the frame. Is there a way to cut edges? Turn the picture because yeah, you just I took mine upside down. You just um, <laughs> move it with your fingers. Whoa, two fingers. Cool. The good thing is that it follows a lot of the iPad's intuitive controls, so it's almost, yeah. if the kids already know how to use the iPads, they'll right. be able to figure out how to do a lot of things like switching slides around. Yeah, and I didn't even think about them taking pictures upside down, but, you know, they just totally were like that. <laughs> no, but when they had them, you know, they're just taking pictures like however they want, and then when they come up, they're like, what? So they, I mean, they just knew what to do, yeah. but... I'm sure Smarties. they know a lot more than we think they do. But, um, so that's that. 
any other questions?